Boom. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing, brother? Good, man. Happy Whiskey Wednesday. Happy Whiskey Wednesday to you. Uh, we get a new thing. It's here. You don't yep. know. Yep. Got this one, but the new thing's here. What's the new one look like? Ooh. Tasty. Pretty sweet. Yep. I haven't even. Cr I saved the uh, the honors to crack it for uh, for the show. So. Is this is this the moment? This is. Do should it should it be the moment now? Let's jump into to a first taste live. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see here. Oh, yep. The cork is good. There it is. Good smell to it. This is the double oak bourbon. Bourbon whiskey finished with sherry oak staves. Stuff. Do you know what? Do you know what all that means? Are you a big whiskey guy? You know about sherry. I don't know what staves is. What is that? So it's like uh, we put wood in the whiskey rather than uh, doing the second aging, pouring all the liquid into a different barrel. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's still wood in contact with with whiskey that where the flavor comes from, but staves is just what the barrel's made out of, like individual pieces of wood that make up the barrel. I see. And sherry oak means that it was it was a barrel that had a uh, Oloroso sherry in the south of Spain hanging out in it. I feel like I, sh I need a shot glass to properly sip this. Maybe I'll uh, just take a pull right off the bottle. I think. Do do what you got to do, man. Oh yeah, that's very good. Happy Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. So, yeah, when you guys you guys asked me if I wanted to sing songs and sip sip whiskey, two o'clock in the afternoon, I said, "Let's do it." Let's do it. You know. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, how you been, man? It's it's autumn now. We're out of the smoke. Yep, I that was that was a uh, it was a smoky time, but I'm glad the rain came back. I never thought I'd be happy to see the rain. I know. We're so happy to see the rain, but it was it was real nice to clear it clear the air. <laughs> yeah. I got my my leaves on for the season change. Yep. I was wearing my uh, my kitty sweatshirt with the fall leaves on it, but decided to switch it up, wear a smoky bright shirt instead. You know the smoky brights? I, d I don't. They're a local rock and roll band it's here in Seattle. So Seattle, yeah, give us give us a bit of your background. That's usually where we like to start. So we're both hanging out in Seattle in different places, safely socially distanced. Um, but how did you, how did you get to become Chris King of Chris King and the Gutter Balls? And like, uh, what's kind of been your trajectory in, in music and rock and roll and in the Seattle scene? Yeah, um, well, I, I mean, I originally came from Santa Cruz, California. I grew up down there, um, and I came up to Seattle about ten years ago, and you know, kind of started playing music around um, Bothell area. And uh, I had a buddy that had a studio up there, so. Um, he kind of let me like record some songs for free that I was demoing out and doing that. And then I got uh, started, I started working on like a weed farm and got kind of mixed up with that and got screwed over for some, <laughs> some money. And <laughs> yeah, had had my, uh, my booty on the streets for a little bit. And then, um, yeah, found a band. Uh, actually, some buddies of mine moved up from, uh, from Santa Cruz as well. And um, they decided they want to start a band so we started playing i think we got we got like a residency at blue moon tavern um on like sundays uh so we played like you know every sunday for four or five hours and then just kind of took off from there started like hanging out at other people's shows and you know poking the bear and trying to get in the scene and kind of just you know met met some friends and now i now I'm here. <laughs> uh, that's a long set, man. Four, four or five hours. That's a lot of. Yeah, I mean, we make. we took a we took generous breaks for sure. But <laughs> what what did, what were you mostly playing for for while you were kind of building into the residency? So I had already, you know, probably like ten to fifteen songs of just my solo stuff, and then we had 
by that time, at least like six or seven, you know, personal songs. And then we just try to do some covers, you know. Um, but a lot of it was just me filling up some space. You know, I've been playing since I was like 15. Um, I had a fake ID too, so I, I could get in some shows a little earlier on. So I was playing at like 17 at some, some clubs and stuff. What was what was the vibe that you were you were doing in the Blue Moon, or and what was like? Always, I'm always so interested. Like, what's your background? What's what? What are you building on? What are your inspirations? And like, was were you playing stuff that was like near and dear to your heart as like covers to fill up space? Like, or was it something to fit the vibe that you would have? Like, oh, these are the crowd pleasers because we need to fill the tip jar, or was it like split? Yeah, the I don't know. I've never really been uh, into like crowd pleasing as much um i did I, I had a gig at uh salty seafood for a while and i was you know i'd sing like margaritaville or i'd sing that that crap you know but uh <laughs> you know like if somebody you know throws out a song that i know i'll sing it but uh i really don't know too many covers you know I, i've forgotten them by now so yeah i wasn't getting strong jimmy buffett vibes but i dig it <laughs> <laughs> you gotta play margaritaville yeah wish i had a pencil thin mustache you know <laughs> i wish i had a lot of things that jimmy Buff buffett had. <laughs> like loads of money probably um that'd, that'd be sweet or a boat or a, a burger company that'd be cool yeah a boat burger company those are at the top of the list <laughs> yeah in my 10-year plan <laughs> uh, so why why seattle what brought you to seattle specifically from santa cruz um I think I was just like in the, you know, the time I moved here, I was listening to a lot of people that were on sub pop and, you know, I was either going to go to Grand Rapids, Michigan or come to Seattle. Um, I had taken like a road trip to Grand Rapids uh, with a buddy and he kind of showed me like this cool folk scene that was going on early, earlier in the 2000s. Um, and I just kind of, yeah made some friends over there and they dug my music and I was pretty young. So they kind of like, I felt like accepted in that scene. So I thought I'd move there. And then I was thinking about it and I was like, no, I don't, I don't want to live in the Midwest. My mom's from Wisconsin. So I, I spent some, some summers and some winters and I like, I think I like the West coast a little bit better. Yeah. So. You didn't want to go back to the land of the frigid winters. No, no, I did not. So, you know, made made a choice i was i could have went to san francisco i guess too but i just kind of picked seattle and enrolled with it uh well both i mean both seattle and, and grand rapids are kind of known for being beautiful places though like grand rapids is close to where uh teddy roosevelt used to was one of his favorite fishing spots yeah yeah big rapids is up there um and then that upper peninsula too in michigan you know if you get up into that <clears throat> that forestry stuff up, up towards Canada. It's really beautiful. So it wouldn't have been a bad move. You know, I, I should go back soon. I got, got, I've stayed connected with most, most of those buds. So is that, but is that something that appeals to you? Is that like part of the draw of Seattle is the nature stuff? Do you get to out in the woods and enjoy any of that? I try to. Yeah. You know, when it's not too smoky, <laughs> Yeah. but uh, yeah, no, it's definitely an appeal. You know, we have, the ocean we have mountains we have desert you know we got city country you could do all over the spectrum you know get it all within a two-hour drive whatever direction you want to go to yeah and it's close to california too close to home um so yeah i i definitely think like the the, na the nature is an appeal for sure so we threw that post up uh earlier of you was that was that and and we had a question from from the fans. Yeah, I saw I, a, a cat responded. Some cat, yeah. A kitten page. Yeah. Called cat, the gutter the cat, huh? Yeah, so you're the gutter Instagram, and uh, gutter the cat is, is a very similar handle. Was so the biggest cat, fan. <laughs> um, but tell, can you t give us a bit about a background about your guitar? Tell us about the guitar. People love to know about the guitar. Um, This is... Uh, Koa wood from Hawaii, and uh, it's got abalone inlays, and it's actually not my guitar, but well, it's half my guitar. Um, another band I play with, Martial Law Band, we we tour in 
uh, kind of tropical places sometimes. So we went to Hawaii and we needed a guitar to cruise around with. So uh, our guitar player works at Guitar Center. So we just got a good discount on this guitar and I really liked it. So I kind of just <laughs> hung on to it, you know? It's I the cruising it guitar. I love it. The cruising guitar, yeah. And it's got a cool tone and you know, for a cheaper guitar, I've spent like, you know, close to a thousand dollars on an acoustic guitar and I, I like this thing better, you know? Yeah. I um, always love it. You just want the one that you can play. That's the one that's right, right? So, yeah. And you feel like you can throw it in the back of the car and it'll be all right, you know? Yeah. I, I do a little bit of uh, riding of bicycles and a lot of people have been asking me like, oh, what do I get? And it's like the bike that you want to ride is the one that you should, you should get. Like, yeah. Now you spend 5,000 bucks on it. Like, you can learn all the details about it, but at the end of the day, it's the one that you want to pick up and play, the one that you yeah. want to ride, the one. Yeah. Yeah, I had a, <clears throat> I still have my, like, fixed geared bike from when I was riding around in high school, but I, uh, I don't know, I got a little bit older, so my knees aren't <laughs> what they used to be, where I can whip skid out, you know, and stop. Oh, man, so. dude, this is a tough town to, to try and f ride fixie in. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's rough, for sure. <laughs> I still don't have brakes on them either, so I need to figure that out if I want to ride oh. that bike. <laughs> well, we'll get you hooked up. Yeah. So you're going to play some some tunes. I'm going to make some cocktails. And kind of what we've been doing is usually there's like a way to approach it either through uh, the style of the track, some emotional thing that you like mentioned this part of the lyrics, some synesthesia thing that's like, oh, I'm going to make a drink because I felt this way. Uh, that's what the vibes of the drink match up with the mood of the song. But I also like to play bartender a little bit. Okay. So what... I like that. Yeah, what do you like to drink? Like, what's kind of your vibe if you ordered a cocktail at a bar? Or what, what What are you flavors that you gravitate towards? Um, I mean, today I went with a pretty simple, you know, got the got the big ginger, you know. Oh, got nice. The, uh, just the, the Bedford's ginger beer, a little lemon wedge, you know. And uh, the Noble Oak. You never go wrong with whiskey ginger, man. One of my favorites. Yeah, same here. But, I mean, I'm a big uh, tequila drinker as well. So I really enjoy tequila. I used to be into rum, but I don't do that anymore. Um, but whiskey, you know, tried and true, always. Can't go wrong with whiskey. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think... If I was to order something at a bar, if I was going to sip on something, well, if they had this, I'd order this, but, you know, I like old Overholt. It's pretty good. Um, so, you do you like stick to the classics? Because I, I was feeling like we're in autumn now. Kind of, uh, it's raining out. It's back to the Seattle gray. Yeah. Very, very welcome Seattle gray this week. Um, I was kind of feeling like we might do something like classic old-fashioned, classic Manhattan, kind of stirred vibes. Sounds great. All right. I think I might just make an old-fashioned. Is that too boring? No, that's perfect. That's what, I mean, that's what I would do if I had the fixings. Well, cool. Let's. What are we going to hear first? Um, I think for that, we're going to I think I'm gonna play Weekend Warrior for you. It's a, it's a new song that um, we're about to, about to release soon. Beautiful. I'm going to whip up an old-fashioned. I'm going to hop off camera for a second and cool. get some stuff out of the fridge. But, uh, cheers, everybody. Cheers. Take it away. I was drunk 
said, nothing is my favorite thing to do. Another night, another dream, addicted to the love of sea. Let's drink some beers and smoke some joints. I will get drunk tonight. Oh, but I have tried to see that bright side of life. Yeah, she's holding. Fantastic stuff. This is this is perfect because this this is what I want to drink when I hear that song. Uh, Good so song. I'm not even going to stir this in advance. I put whiskey and some bitters in here, just right into the glass with the ice. Yep. Just a bit of sugar. You want to tell us a bit about this this track? What's what's the new stuff that's coming out? What you're working on? Yeah, um, I mean, this is a song when we wrote when we were kind of deeper in the touring situation, and um, you know, this last year we were kind of you know branching out a little bit more than we usually what you know usually did before um, in prior years of the Gutterball legacy. But uh, yeah, it's just about being on the road and meeting people and all the struggles and all the booze and all the all the good times you know um and i think i think releasing it is gonna be maybe a little uh a little strange because it's not quite irrelevant you know bands can't really uh tour as much these days but it might uh might give some people some good feelings you know remember yeah, seeing the shows and for bands what, maybe being on the road what does that look like for you now or what has that looked like kind of in the absence of touring have you filled up that space with anything like shows on the internet or whiskey and writing man That's what going on. Oh, you get the <laughs> yeah uh, I've, I've been doing uh like morning pages so i'll wake up first thing in the morning and <clears throat> type out like a couple pages of just any gibberish stream of consciousness songs whatever i'm thinking diary you know so how many albums have you written so far during in the last five months <laughs> uh well i mean i'm actually really excited about this new project i've been doing with um kevin murky of the moon doggies he uh lives in the one wall away from me right here in my house um and we just been writing tunes together are you familiar with the moon doggies uh i know the name of the moon doggies but i don't know why i know the name of the moon doggies they're also local guys you're here in seattle. yeah yeah they're they're pretty prominent in seattle they've been a band you know for the last 10 years and they're beloved by kxb and all the good stuff but um yeah i've i've just been seeing them around uh, you know around town a lot and kevin started coming to uh the bar i, I was bartending at i was bartending at this pinball bar in fremont called Adaball. yeah i know uh, have you been there yeah. Nice. Let me uh, get the get the good folks at uh, the new Dreamland Bar and Diner just next door on Triangle and that yep. whole court. Yep. It's a hot neighborhood. It's a hot neighborhood for sure. Um, but yeah, just, just making projects uh, with him, you know, been playing a, a couple other bands too and helping them write some songs and trying to collaborate on producing like some records or helping produce records and yeah so what does that what does that look like now what how are you guys recording do you have like are you still booking space does somebody have a spot that you get to go to to record like yeah um i mean with um one project uh i went up into the mountains and we rented a cabin 
and we just did a you know brought all the recording equipment ourselves um and we just you know spent a weekend in the cabin and recorded there um i have a basement uh in this house that i live at and we are just now trying to figure out like a recording setup so finally got like a mixer and i bought a new laptop and we got you know some mics so it's a growing studio but we're gonna start doing some like live tracks at least you know getting something laid down yeah that's kind of been a theme now with the the, the folks that we've been chatting with the last couple of wednesdays on on this series it's just like you know everything's changed you need to just learn new skill sets to fill fill the gaps and it's like now we're just home engineers and we're figuring out you know how mics work and how the acoustics in my basement or my attic or whatever works For it's sure. cool you know, I think that just the music landscape has changed so much, like the tools that you can get are so much more accessible. But the music has been like democratized a lot, which which is cool. I mean, it's challenging because of the way to monetize it has also changed and you don't have the touring and gigging opportunities. But I just love the creativity that we have so much access to now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's hard not to be able to play shows, you know, like in front of people. But, you know, live stream is good. I'll take that's the next best thing, I guess. So. And uh, yeah, it seems like, you know, this is a really cool thing you're doing as well. It seems like everybody's figuring out like new and creative ways to spend their time, you know, like I'm sure a lot of musicians are the same as me, but just have a lot of time, not a lot of money. So, you know, yeah. So write some tunes. I made an old fashioned. It's got a cherry in there. It's got a little citrus. Normally I like to throw in an orange zest, but I don't have that. Just a, uh, the way I like to do it, a couple of dashes of Angostura orange bitters, just a whisper, a bar spoon of good maple syrup and good whiskey. That's it. That's the drink. That's the drink that goes with the track. That's the All drink. right. Send it on over, man. There you go, man. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. How's it taste? Pretty good? That's the drink. That's the drink that everybody wants today, right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting those vibes today. Uh, tell me about who's Pony Boys. Is that something? Pony Boys. Somebody, somebody just said Pony Boys in the comments. Oh, <laughs> Lemmy, what's happening? Rhinestone Pony. That's uh. So Lemmy plays in a band called the Road Jelly Jive, and they're down in Sonoma, California. Uh, much love to you, Lemmy. Rhinestone Pony. Um, him and his fiance are getting married soon, so we're gonna have a rhinestone rhinestone pony wedding. I guess it's a it's a bit of an inside joke, but um we uh had some drinks one night and uh I had this old rhinestone pony, like it's a very creepy looking like um velvet painting in my old house and uh everybody just kept looking at it like, What the hell is that? Like what <laughs> why do you have that on the wall, you know? And we just started making fun of it and writing songs about it and I think that's a thing. We started a, we're going to start a, you know, a hair metal band called Rhinestone Ponies. And nice. I don't know. We'll see. See where yeah. it takes us. Well, I'll dust off the keyboard, man. I'm ready. I'm ready for my hair metal days. Yeah. And, you know, go back to no haircuts again here. We're back in the period of no haircuts. So let's do this. Yep. Yep. I just got a little trim, but <clears throat> I was growing her, growing her long there for a sec. Uh, so is that a segue into the next track? Are we hearing the rhinestone, the rhinestone pony song, or what's rhinestone pony? Yeah, that's all we got so far, but it's a work in progress. That's no, that's beautiful. That's a fantastic first couple of bars right there. Yeah, I think we actually do have more to it, but Lemmy's gonna have to hop on here and and chime in <laughs> with some lyrics. So. Let me remind us what the first verse of the rhinestone pony track is. I remember it was like a stomp. It was like a. <laughs> it's one of those, oh. one of those hand clap tracks, right? I think but... I was just a home kind of guy, so I don't know. But yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, stomp hand clap kind of thing. Uh, how about tell us about what you've got available for streaming now? Like if folks go check out uh, Chris King and, and the Gutter Balls on Spotify or. Apple Music or whatever, what, or a Bandcamp. What, what's your kind of plat streaming platform of choice? How do you like to share music, and what can folks hear as of today before yeah. the next? Yeah, we have a, a Bandcamp. Um, you know, we have a, 
uh, YouTube channel too. We did like a live in KXP session, so people can go check that out. We're doing a live stream tomorrow through um, Big Building. Uh, it's called Grounded, and it's with this band called Breaks and Swells. And oh yeah, it's usually it's oh. usually on a rooftop, but they moved us to Central Saloon because it's supposed to thunder tomorrow. So it's not gonna be the greatest for a rooftop jam. Yeah, it breaks and swells too. A couple, you had a couple of bartenders in the band there as well. Yep. I don't know where do they bartend at. Do you know? Uh, well, our our buddy Dylan, who was working at was working at Tavern Law for a while, and was at then was at Cannon. I don't know what he's up to recently. And Derek, who plays uh, the drums for them, I know he. I don't know if he bartends, but he's definitely in the service industry and, and has worked at a couple of different bars and joints around town. Nice. Uh, yeah, so that'll be a, that'll be a fun stream. Um, yeah, we're definitely on Spotify and all the all the platforms. And we got the we got a vinyl out too that we've been selling. Um, we got Pain Waves is our 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 baby, our masterpiece so far. So that's the, name of the record is called Pain Waves. Pain Waves, yeah. So we we're selling that on our website, and um, I definitely recommend picking one of those up if you're out there, folks. Yeah, I saw I saw some of your studio stuff. I love it. Also, one thing that we haven't done yet on the series, if you'll indulge me, is uh, talk to KEXP at all. So, if you you've gone on, if you who are you live in studio with, Cheryl or? Uh, no, we were with Eva Walker. So okay. she plays with the Black Tones, and she's great, man. She's great spirit. It was really fun, fun to, you know, she made it a really cool environment in the in the studio. And, and uh, that's. That's in the new space that they got down there in the next to Victrola. It's beautiful. Yeah, it was really quite uh, exciting to finally see those lights, you know, up front. Um, and, it's yeah. so cool. Yeah, the, the, the whole aesthetic in there. And uh, you can go. I, I got to see one of the shows. Uh, it was. Uh, shit, I'm going to forget her name now. Um, but I got to go to one of the in studios and see some of the behind the scenes because we had a uh, a little bit of Noble Oak advertisement on in the first year of the KEXP nice. Tuesday, Tuesday evening shows. So nice, yeah. Was that um? Do you remember who hosted that? Was that Cheryl Waters? I uh, know it was the like. What's their Americana like throwback show? Oh, Greg Mandy. Yeah. Oh, the Roadhouse. The Roadhouse. We were Roadhouse. On the road. I like the Roadhouse. Shout out to uh, Greg Bandy. Yeah, love the Roadhouse. I mean, KXP is an institution. I, I kept telling everybody that I was working with back in New York, like, if, you know, for a brand that launched in, in Seattle, KXP is kind of like, feels like our spiritual heart and soul. Like, yeah, it, it's the pulse of Noble Oak, I feel like, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, our, like, record sales and, like, our followers, you know, definitely went up significantly after our live live session there. So, you know, they've, they've shown us some love, and, you know, I'm really happy to be in the in the scene, in the family, you know. They definitely are a stronghold in the scene. Um, I'm sure they help out a ton of bands all over the world. Uh, cool. Well, let's hear another, let's hear another thing. All right. Is this um, this one on the record? This one is off Pain Waves. This is a uh, this is one you can you can check out. Um, it's called Perfect Naked Lovely Day. Um, it's not so perfect, but you could be naked out there. You know, make it your own. Pour yourself a cocktail. Yeah, a let little, us know. A little noble oak bourbon. Uh, is the new the fresh one? Is that rye? Uh, the new, the new, new one, the, the new, new bottle. Day. Yeah. Uh, this is a bourbon, but we're doing a little bit of a different finish on it. So the bourbon with the white label, the OG, uh, says double oak finished with sherry oak staves. The new one has three different types of wood in it. So it's got Japanese, European, and American oak, ex bourbon, sherry seasoned European oak, and virgin Japanese Mizunara. Um, and it's really delicious and it's bottled at a little bit higher proof. Uh, so it's a bit hotter on the, the initial palate, but it's just, it's super good. 
That's great. Graham cracker and vanilla and custard and baking spice Ooh. and bread. And... That sounds tasty. It's like all the good stuff in here just like dialed up to this one goes to 11. Yeah. Wow. I so I saw on one of your um one of your streams you did uh I forget the artist but she said she was liking like tropical drinks and you I think you did something with a plum tree in the back. So yeah. How did that How did that cocktail turn out? Dude, it was so good. But stuff like that's tough. Like, I love doing stuff like that. We've played around a lot with, like, farm fresh ingredients because we have a little bit of garden action here. The challenge with that is that, like, it's really hard to replicate the plum puree because we got, like, the world's largest fennel plant out back. So it's, like, plum and fennel and all the flavors are super good together, but it's hard to teach anybody how to make that. Yeah. This is, like, you got to be here because it's awesome and everybody should drink one, but, yeah. like, it's hard to share the recipe, so. Yeah, get your own plum tree. Get, yeah. <laughs> First, you gotta grow your own plum tree. <laughs> All right. Well, shall I sing you a song here? Let's hear the Let's hear the song, man. This is the tuning song. It don't take too long. I thought you were about to like drop the D like we were going to go into some real heavy power chords or something. <laughs> yeah. You can get that from me, but maybe rhinestone pony. Well, yeah, that's for the hair metal band. Yeah. All right. This one is called perfect naked love today. Off pain waves. Thanks so much everybody for tuning in. On a perfect, naked, lovely day What a time to waste away Oh, what a lovely day To spend with you And all the pain fell do. Seen a rhythm in the change and I like it, oh I like it, and oh, all a perfect day, oh what a perfect day to invite these strange times of change in your own ways. Fuck the trunk, we gotta chop this from the trunk, we're gonna be okay. You said you're gonna like it when you see it, revolution, gonna be a part of this change. Gonna be one with the strange times of change. But oh, what a perfect day Ah, oh, what a perfect day What a perfect, naked, lovely day And I miss you Oh, I miss you So much I don't want to use you. I don't want to lose you. Abuse you as a friend. I don't want to use you, baby. I just want to surf on down your lanes. Want to skate with the freedom. On the Let it, let it shine, just to waste, just to waste, waste your time, thinking how, time is now, let's take, oh, what a perfect day.
Tell us just a, either a bit of a story about that song or about Pain Waves. Like, why, why Pain Waves? Um, it was kind of an album that was, you know, I was in a pretty uh, existential part in my life. You know, I, I'd quit um, doing all the drugs and drinking and um, smoking cigarettes and kind of just hold myself away in my room after breaking up with... Um, with a, a loved one and uh and yeah just a bunch of like bullshit happened like you know trump was elected president you know like uh my bit my drummer's dad passed away and my dog had to bury it you know like just all, all kinds of stuff just you know there was a bunch of fires too happening so it was the same situation as, as now it just seemed kind of like apocalyptic and um so I, if anything this this album kind of uh speaks to uh to the times now you know it still resonates um but yeah just an album about you know um yeah i was just feeling pretty existential in that in that time of writing it um so yeah um so how does where does how does perfect lovely naked lovely day situate into the world of of pain waves um, I think that song is definitely like a heartbreak song, but it's also kind of like a heartbreak with the world, you know, not just like a, a human. Um, and, you know, there was a lyric where I said, fuck the Trump in it, but we decided to change it to what has become. Um, just because uh, we don't want to, you know, we want to keep all our fans and if some people are, you know, politically inclined to have different opinions than ours, and so be it. It'll be all right, you know. So how do you feel like you're internalizing the current moment? Because you've been writing a lot. You're writing every day, at least the morning pages. Like, how do you feel like that is translating into what you're creating that will be coming out on your next stuff? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm trying to figure out other avenues besides songs, too, to, you know, I have a bunch of like old, you know, just binders full of just writing. So it'd be cool to put a book together. Um, uh, I have a lot of poetry too, so that'd be, that'd be nice. But um, as far as like the, uh, the theme of songs, um, I definitely took a whack at, you know, a couple uh, of like COVID inspired songs. Um, they don't have the word COVID in you know, in it at all. But like, I wrote a song called The Night They Shut Down the World. And you can find that on YouTube and stuff. Um, but, you know, it's definitely about <clears throat> I was walking around one day and all the bars had shut down. And it's just, you know, nobody around. And it was, you know, kind of like, shit, the night they shut down the world, you know, it's a yeah. it's all across the world, too, you know, pandemic spread. And the way that it happened felt I, I... I feel that feeling very much. It was supposed to be like, for me, I would be traveling the country and like visiting all of our top accounts across the country and like hanging out with bartenders all over the place. I was supposed to get on a plane and go to Detroit and yeah. throw a cocktail competition. And we were having conversations. That would have been fun. We were like, I don't know, like if, if this is good, if you should get on this airplane. And it was like two days before the lights got shut off proverbially. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I, I mean, I feel for a lot of musicians, it's not just myself. That's like, you know, I had a lot of plans to tour this year, you know, I was trying to, I had a goal to play like 200 shows, you know, I was trying to like play the most shows I've ever played. And then, you know, all kind of shut down. But it's not just for me. everybody, you know, is, is feeling it, you know, a lot of, a lot of bands that were touring, you know, I had a side side job, I was bartending, but some bands, you know, that was their, that was their bread and butter, you know. 
Yeah, and it really felt like, like the lights got turned off, right? Like it was just like, well, it's just not there anymore. Yeah. Like this, this, it felt like flipping a switch, so which was part of what made it feel so weird, I think. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, just like, you know, I think like after, you know, we were going to do like Tree Fort Festival. We were going to do, you know, Fisherman's Village Festival up here in Seattle. And we just heard back like one by one, just like, oh, canceled, canceled. I was just like, oh. This is heartbreaking, but you know, it's every everybody's feeling it, so you know, can't get too down on yourself. But it's uh, yeah. it's definitely like you know, it's kind of like I don't know when we're gonna be able to play a live show in front of people in a confined area, you know, like some of our, at some of our venues, like again, you know, it's yeah, maybe, be... some, maybe some outdoor stuff, but probably nothing indoors for a while still, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, we, we might not all be in the same boat, we're definitely all in the same storm for sure. Uh, do you want to do a third thing or do you want to leave it there? Uh, you want to play another song? Yeah. Yeah, I could. I could play that Night They Shut Down the World song for you. All right, before we do, because we're going to have you play us out with this. Uh, I made a Manhattan. So I just made a Manhattan in an old fashioned to go with the songs today. You want one too, Nikki? Yeah. All right. <laughs> let's all, yeah, let's all get in on here. We got yeah. some. Small camera operator. I, got, I got my girlfriend Nikki here too. She's operating the camera, so making making her a cocktail too. Oh, fantastic! Hi from the other side of the camera. Hey, yeah, Nikki. Hello. You can throw throw a hand in there. Let's all cheers. Yes. I um, cheers. We got the moon doggies popping off in here with Small Paul. Oh yeah, so that's our new project. We got Small Paul the uh, and the. Uh, American, we were, gonna, we were we're trying to figure out how to not get sued. We we're going to uh, have a band called Paul Mall and the American Spirits. Um, but I think we're just going to small Paul. I mean, I think and you the should. And the Spirits or something. Just go for it. Just see if you can get the C&D. Yeah, right. If we get sued, uh, we'll probably get some good publicity. That's good for publicity, exactly. Yeah, um, um, yeah before it. we launch into the into the last track... The last song, Small Paul has been summoned. Uh, oh, Paul, like small, leave... small Paul and the Summon Spirits, that's what it is. Yeah. Sorry, go for it. I like to leave with something uh, optimistic, just because, you know, every day feels like super weighty these days, just because just cause that's what it is, right? It's like, it's not the smoke, it's the politics, it's the something else. It's the not being able to go out and play shows. But I'm always curious to know, like, it's been a really tough year. I think it's been a, t a challenging year for everybody, one way or another. But like, what has been bringing you life? What what have you what is have you turned to to stay optimistic, to stay uh, bright, and and anything good in your life in the last six months, last week, whatever that you want to highlight? We've already yeah. touched. On I mean, it's it's and, definitely it's definitely forced uh, forced me to be like creative. Um, um, you know, Nikki and I do a lot of projects together. You know, she she just like she just goes and films me by a river or something, or like. We can go like we're working on like a variety show we want to do, you know, so like little stuff like that. And then, you know, small Paul and the summon spirits, like that's a great opportunity that me and my roommates would have been all in our separate bands, you know, doing it on tour, you know, gone a lot, but we're just in our house and, you know, we're in this creative spot. So I would never had this opportunity to like write all these cool songs with these great, you know, musicians that I'm so close with now, you know, and build that bond. So kind of owe it to the COVID pandemic to own that, I guess. But yeah, I mean, just trying to see the, see the bright side of it. You know, it's, it's definitely making me uh, try to, you know, try to expand my um, creative horizons, so to speak, I guess, just, you know, probably wouldn't have had time to think about putting a book together or like, you know, trying, trying to do a variety show or trying to, you know, yeah. Make, so it's make, like, make video, videos or like promote, you know, it just leaves a lot more time to catch up on some of that back end stuff and start new projects. Like the other side of, of challenges is opportunity because it puts you in a different, you know, you didn't get to tour, but you did get to do this other stuff. Right. You, might, you know, we can all feel sorry for ourselves or we could embrace it and, and follow this year wherever it takes us and try and make the most of it. Yep. I hear that. 
All right. Well, cheers, Thanks. man. Thanks. It's nice to see you. It's nice, nice to have this chat and catch up. I love hearing the, the songs. And uh, let's take it out with the night, the world. <laughs> night they shut down the world. The night they shut down the world. Well, cheers, man. Thank you so much for having me on, on the show. And uh, thanks for the, the bottle. Likewise. Uh, it's, it's my bass player's birthday today, so we're going to go uh, celebrate. I'm going to share this with him after. So. Love it. Happy birthday to your bass player. Happy birthday, Malcolm, if you're watching. And actually, before you jump into it, any, to any last things that you want to shout out for where folks can, can follow along and, and just check out anybody who's tuned into our channel that might want to? Sure, uh, yeah. Um, uh, we have, you know, www.chriskingandthegutterballs.com. That's pretty much all you need to know. Uh, you know, go to the merch section, pick up a vinyl. Um, we might have a special treat for pre-order soon as well um, that I can't go too deep into. Uh, but there's new stuff on the way. Um, and, yeah, you can find all our music platforms there. So let's head down to the website. Love it. Chris King and the gutterballs.com. Also, shout out Upcountry Studios. Love cooking with Noble Oak. Good old Noble Stew. If you're Good up old up, Noble Stew. Today's the perfect day for it. We got a, a week of gray, rainy weather. Fall is here. Let's, let's have some Noble Stew. To Noble Stew. Cheers. Is that whiskey stew? It's cooking with cooking with whiskey, man. You got to It's it's crazy. So many flavor possibilities. <laughs> I'm going to have to taste me some of that when it when it's uh safe. Yeah, send some our way, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, here it is. Thanks again for having me, man. Cheers.
There's a blurry sun and a misty morning. How long have I been up? Am I even awake anymore? Oh, the night is shut down the world. Living is a little strange. Things may never be the same. Oh, you can lead me to that old Oh, play.